Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is discount factors. Recall back to the last lecture on the finite length prisoner's dilemma. We saw that we can't get cooperation to occur in equilibrium there. The natural next question to ask, then, is what about an infinite length game? Is this non-cooperation problem solely occurring because of the fixed ending date in a finite length prisoner's dilemma? And if we don't have that fixed ending, can we possibly get cooperation to occur? Well, that's a good question to ask, and it's one that we should answer, but we can't just jump into it immediately. There's a big problem here. Take a look at this payoff matrix. Imagine that you're player one, and you're playing against player two on an infinite length game. You're going to repeat this prisoner's dilemma over and over and over again without end. Imagine, for whatever reason, you defect in every single period, and player two cooperates in every single period. What's your payoff? Well, you get a payoff of 4 today, 4 tomorrow, 4 the next day, and so forth. There are an infinite string of payoffs of 4, which means your payoff for all of the time is infinity. Now think about what happens if you cooperate in every single period, while player 2 defects in every single period. Now you get a payoff of 1 today, 1 tomorrow, 1 the next day, and so forth, for an infinite length of time. Your payoff overall, then, is also infinity. That means your payoff for your best outcome, repeated over and over and over again, is somehow equal to your payoff for your worst outcome, repeated over and over and over again. That is the fun and also the pain of infinity. So if we just have these payoffs recurring in every single period like this, we run into these big problems, things that don't actually make sense. Fortunately, there's a way we can salvage the system. Think about this for a moment. Would you rather have $3 today or $3 tomorrow? Imagining that the payoff for mutual cooperation 3 represents a dollar figure. Well, you should prefer having that $3 today. For one thing, you could be putting it into a bank and accumulating interest on it, but you could also go out and use it. If you want that $3 to purchase something, having that $3 today allows you to purchase it now rather than purchase it later. There's this time value for consumption. Consuming things is better today than it is tomorrow. Because even if you wanted to consume it tomorrow, you could always save the money now and then do it later. There's also a risk that you might not even make it to the second stage. Can you really be sure that if you're playing a Prisoner's Dilemma-like game, that you're going to be around to the next day to play? Maybe you're thinking about this between yourself and your boss. You came into work today, you chose to cooperate, your boss chose to cooperate. Maybe you're doing that because there's an expectation that in future periods, you're going to have cooperation as well. But can you really be sure that the business is still going to be around in the next period? Can you really be sure that you or your boss is going to be alive in the next period? I mean, God forbid that one of you dies, but it's possible. There's some chance that that might happen. And heck, a meteor might come and smash into the earth between now and then as well, and that would also terminate the game. So it's not actually the case that there is a fixed payoff of 3 in the next stage if you're cooperating in that stage, because you might not actually get to it. And that's what this discount factor represents. It discounts the future. And we use the lowercase Greek letter D, delta, to represent that. Discount, D, delta, makes sense. Discount factors are values that range between 0 and 1. They do not include 0 or 1. If the discount factor was actually 1, then you wouldn't be discounting the future. You would just be having your payoff be the same in every single stage, and that was the problem that we're trying to fix. It also can't be 0, because if you're placing 0 value on the future, then you're not even looking at a repeated game. You're looking essentially at a one-shot prisoner's dilemma like we had been in Lesson 1.1. Discount factors represent the time value of consumption and the probability of continuation. Notice that it's a value between 0 and 1, so that's a probability. So if you just want to think about this in the simplest sense, you can think about this probability, this delta, this discount factor, as representing the probability of reaching the next stage in every single period. So higher values of this discount factor correspond to more patients from an individual, and a higher chance of surviving into the next period. And we can accumulate payoffs like this. So for example, think about your payoff for today and just tomorrow, nothing else. Well, if we're cooperating in every single period, then you would get a payoff of 3 today, 
and you don't get a payoff of three tomorrow. You get a payoff of three times delta, your discount factor. That's again taking into account that $3 today is better than $3 tomorrow, as well as some chance that you won't even make it to the next stage. For the period after that, your payoff is a little bit different. Now you get a payoff of three plus delta squared if we're looking at a prisoner's dilemma that's repeated just three times. Why is this delta squared? Well, think about what happens when you're interpreting the discount factor as the probability of continuation. Imagine that the probability of continuing in any given stage is one half. Well, in order for you to reach that third period, you first need to survive past the first period, and then conditional on that, you need to survive past the second period. There's a one-half chance of you doing that the first time, and another one-half chance of you doing that the second time. There's a one-fourth chance that you get into this third stage, also known as one-half squared. Hence, delta squared represents the probability that you reach the third stage. And this continues on forever. So you can think about reaching the fourth stage as being delta times, or rather delta times delta times delta, or delta to the third power. So you only get a payoff of three with that probability. And then as you go on and on and on, you keep adding a discount factor for every single stage, multiplying it again and again and again to increase that exponent by one. And then this is going to be your payoff for mutual cooperation forever. Now you might think to yourself, geez, that's even more complicated than just 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Now not only do we have 3s, but we also have these discount factors, these deltas floating in there as well. But as it turns out, this is rather simple. This is something known as a geometric series. And despite the fact that it goes on and on and on forever, it actually has a very simple closed form solution. And that's what we're going to be talking about next time. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction to discount factors, and I hope to see you next time when we get to geometric series. Take care.